Good morning. My name is Samantha Yoder, and I'm the Family Life Minister here at My Near Christian Church. Today, we are on day eight of our Easter devotional series. Today, we'll be discussing Jesus being the Lord of the Sabbath. When we talk about Sabbath, we have to go back to the beginning in the story of creation in Genesis 2. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested. We're going to jump into Matthew 11, starting at verse 27. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am a gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue. And, from, and a man was there with a withered hand, and they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him? He said to them, which one of you has had a sheep? If it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out. Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him, and he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smothering wick he will not quench. Until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him. So the man spoke and saw, and all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, only the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if we cast out the demons, by whom do our sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges." But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. For how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless his first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. 
You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of the good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account of every careless word they speak. For by every by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of the men will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. We're then going to look at John 19, which says, When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Looking at John six twenty nine, it says, Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Sabbath was created for rest by God. Our work today is to put our faith in Jesus, who came to finish God's work through his death on the cross. In a book that I've been reading called Garden City by John Mark Comer, he states that, Sabbath is an expression of faith, faith that there is a creator and he is good. On Sabbath, we don't just take a day off work, but also fear, anxiety, stress, and worry. We let all of that go for a day of rest in God. We do this to forget that there is a God and that we are not him. We can rest this Easter knowing Jesus' work is done and we have a God who loves us and is doing good things. I hope you all have a great day and are blessed by this.